This is the world's first decentralized training of a large language model. A large language model of size a 10 billion parameter model is going to be trained completely using decentralized compute. So instead of having one company sponsoring the compute and then training a large language model, this is a socially collaborative project. So where anybody, if you have got an extensive amount of compute, you can go contribute the compute. And you can see on the leaderboard here, who contributed the compute and how much compute they contributed from where they comp uh, contributed. So this is called Intellect One. It's from a company called Prime Intellect. So this is a model or it's supposed to be a model which will be a 10 billion parameter model. It's the world's first decentralized training of a 10 billion parameter model. I think the last thing that they did was 1 billion parameter model. So this is 10 billion parameter model which is beyond any theory. So the idea here is that Anybody can contribute uh, for a compute. So if you have got extensive compute, you can contribute to it and participate in the training of the process, Tra process of the training, model training. The model is going to be based on Llama 3 architecture. I'm not sure if this reminds you anything of crypto, but back in the day when cryptos were like the craze, people used to uh, send malwares where uh, you would have decentralized crypto mining happening. This was like quite famous back then you used to have like Chrome plugins, Chrome extensions stealing your uh, compute, uh, malware stealing your compute. So uh, the concept kind of existed, but I think this is the first time, at least that's what they're claiming it to be. This is the first time somebody is trying to do this for a large language model training. I remember back in the day, there was a project from Hugging Face Big Science, but I guess that is slightly different. I couldn't recall, I tried so hard before making this video, but somehow I couldn't recall the name of the project. So if you happen to know the project, let me know in the comment section. But that also had a very long extensive training process. And as part of that, they created something around the name of a flower. I'm not sure if it is petal. That was also kind of a decentralized training framework. Uh, again, I don't have this memory. I couldn't find out it was a vague memory. If you know, let me know in the comment section. But otherwise, what you see here is the dashboard of the decentralized training intellect one. So what you see here is the loss. Uh, training loss basically indicates that how good the model's accuracy is going to become. Perplexity is a metric that usually people use to evaluate the text generation to understand if it is gibberish, like random text or coherent text. Number of tokens per second, this is a training speed and you have got a learning rate that shows like, um, you know, how fast you're trying to have a convergence in this particular case, train the model in itself. You, you also have a map, a very cool map. So it's like, uh, you know, all these Hollywood movies show you this God's eye. So it's kind of that. So you can zoom in, zoom out and see the globe and then see what kind of companies from where, which part of the world they're uh, contributing compute. So you don't see from a lot of companies here, but I think there are like a bunch of companies available here that are contributing. The semi analysis, this is a famous, uh, I think a newsletter or a blog post they used to release a lot of interesting article. I think they became very popular when uh, they released model size of GPT-4 or 3, if I if I remember correctly. You see Hugging Face, you see RC, and uh, surprisingly, Hugging Face is contributing from the US. I thought they would contribute from uh, France, where their headquarters is. And then you have got other companies. So you have got Hyperbolic, and uh, you have got like other people trying to compute uh, contribute their compute and um, people are just just getting in just getting in i try to click contribute compute and it said uh, you can select the gpu you can select the image you can rent and deploy gps and you can do all those things but the main thing here is the training run is not able to accept any more compute contributions please check back soon so it seems like they have got enough compute i guess this is this was my understanding from this particular message so what is happening here if you see what is happening here is Thanks to Google DeepMind, they put out a paper sometime back that is called DLOCO. So this was Google DeepMind's paper, Distributed Low Communication Method for a Scaling or a Enabling a Global Distributed AI Model Training Network. So what these team of researchers did is they took the paper and implemented and published something called Open DLOCO. So it's an open source implementation and they've also scaled DeepMind's distributed low communication method. So with this, what they have managed to do is not just they replicated the paper, but also they successfully managed to train a 1 billion parameter size model. 
I mean, all these things happened back then. I'm not sure why I did not know about it. Uh, it seems something great, but somehow I did not know and I did not even cover this. Had I known the 1 billion parameter model, I would have covered it back then. Now, the first step was to replicate the paper. And uh, the second step kind of uh, is to train a larger model, much beyond than 3A. So what they're trying to do here is they're scaling it up 10x, which is to now train a 10 billion parameter model. This is 25 times bigger than the original research. I think Google DeepMind's research. And this will help anybody, anybody and everybody to contribute, compute, to train uh, open foundation models, like truly, truly open foundation model, like something like what people were trying to do with cryptos. So you can train language to agentic models. And according to them, this is um, a step towards open source AGI. I'm not sure how efficiently this is going to happen because we have seen multiple attempts that talk about open AGI. We don't even have a good open model, I would say like that can beat like Claude 3.5 sonar. I mean, we have got models, not something that you can easily run. Um, again, like vaguely, I remember like there was a hugging face model that was something like you can run this decentralized or something like that. Uh, I, it was a great initiative. I, I wasn't sure why not a lot of people uh, took that forward, but I think this seems like to be a really nice direction and uh, they've got launch partners and contributors and how you can contribute this code uh, GitHub. You can go here and then, you know, solve issues, contribute if you want, or you can go contribute compute. And uh, it all started according to them from uh, the co-founder of Anthropic, Jack Clark. And today is the first time I learned that there is a co-founder of Anthropic that is called Jack Clark. I always knew the brother and sister, um, but I never knew there are like other people. And uh, that's how they started uh, doing this process. There is this decentralized training. There are a couple of interesting aspects that they've mentioned why this actually works for them and what kind of changes that they've made. I'm not going to go into a lot of technical details even. I'm not uh, like that good with all the technical details that they've mentioned here. But imagine like you're trying to train a model. A model training process is uh, building a deep neural network. And when that is happening, you're basically trying to find the convergence or uh, trying to reduce the loss. You've got a cost function and you're trying to train a model in such a way that the weights of the neural networks are optimized to reduce the cost function or whatever the cost function that you have got, reduce the loss. Now, that means if you actually get in a new node, so you've got this place. So for example, imagine somebody from India is, uh, I don't think anybody from India is going to join, but let's say somebody from India is going to join. Maybe I've, I've become super rich and I've got a lot of compute and I'm like, okay, fine. I am from India. Maybe let's uh, go to Mysore. So I'm from Mysore and I'm going to, I want to contribute a compute. So I'm going to be a node here. Now the problem here is that because this is decentralized, there are a lot of different people already training model at different level. Now, what if I were to do contribution, I would, I have to get the copy of the existing checkpoint, the model checkpoint. And that is one thing that they speak about here. So if you see here, one of the thing that they talk about is asynchronous distributed checkpointing and live checkpoint recovery. So one, they don't want to stop the process to do checkpointing and checkpointing itself is an expensive operation. So what they're doing something clever here is that, so in order to minimize the blocking time, which is usually required for checkpointing, the model checkpointing, like you store the temporary progress of the model after certain epochs, certain number of trains. So we first checkpoint into dev SHM, which is a RAM based uh, file system. So one thing that if you know, RAM is uh, the temporary memory in the compute or computer. So the, the primary memory, sorry, the primary memory is RAM. It's also a temporary memory. You need like hard disk or uh, somewhere you can store it for uh, like permanent usage. So instead of that, they are storing it in a RAM based um, system. Uh, this operation is much faster, of course, because you're dealing with RAM, you're not dealing with uh, an external storage here. And we can unblock the main training process once the checkpoint has been created here. Now they are going to use two sub process to asynchronously copy the checkpoint out of this into a checkpoint directory on disk. So, so they are not directly doing it on disk. Um, they are basically you utilizing RAM to store the checkpoint and then having two sub process to copy it and then put it like I found it quite interesting. Like they've given it a thought that was interesting. And also live checkpoint recovery is like when some new node gets to join. So we have joining nodes request the checkpoint from their peers, which almost all host a sidecar server serving the latest checkpoint. So 
everybody is giving the checkpoint on once joining the node has downloaded and initialized the model it skips the inner steps and joins outer step with zero pseudo zero pseudo gradients this is to prevent the joining node from this from stalling the existing nodes if the joining node also performed the inner steps and it will be late to the outer step by the time it took to download and load the checkpoint reducing the clusters uh, compute utilization so one thing if you read the blog post you would actually notice there are two things that they've paid a lot of attention to one they've paid a lot of attention to fault tolerance the second thing you would see that they've uh, focused on is to not waste the compute not to waste time strongly encourage you to go read the blog post here but in a nutshell if you were to do uh, understand what is happening here intellect one is a, like a framework i think i'm not going i'm not sure what they're going to name the model to so train at a 10 billion parameter scale with 98 percentage compute utilization across multiple distributed workers and uh, for our production training we chose to synchronize every 100 steps so every 100 steps and it is trained they're going to have a synchronization which on islands of 8 h100 nodes take roughly 40 minutes to complete we quantize the pseudo gradients to int 8 which is the precision in which they're quantizing it reducing the communication requirements by four 400 times so you would also see that uh, you know being mentioned somewhere here so the all reduced synchronization for the deloco outer optimizer using our new framework takes a less than a minute minimizing a communication between nodes to just one to two percent of total training time like i said what's very important is how do you make sure that you are communicating between the nodes and that's what they're saying that that has uh, that is like maximum one to two percent of the training time uh, overall it's a very uh, interesting uh, proposition uh, something that a lot of people uh, in fact like uh, the stability co-founders imad mustaq i think his new startup is also trying to do some kind of decentralization with respect to ai i'm not sure what he's trying to do but he's also trying to do something around it so everybody who was a fan of crypto uh, until crypto turned into you know money making machine um, i was a big fan of crypto and you could see that uh, i was not a big fan of crypto i was a fan of bitcoin paper which was the technical paper not a money making machine uh, so philosophical differences there but anyways uh, i think all those people are going to appreciate what is happening here the decentralization the training the file sharing the network sharing the compute sharing and all those things i would love to see this project succeed and uh, i'm going to look forward to see what is going to happen probably have a ritual every day to see what is going to happen there is no eta in here so i'm not sure if adding more compute this would uh, become faster i don't think that is going to happen but this seems uh, like a natural way for us to utilize uh, compute from decentralized resources but this also gives us um, more possibility to have a skynet kind of a network which uses a decentralized uh, you know power compute to have a final one AGI overload. So it's it's funny how we are all converging into that point. Uh, I'm not a believer of that, but it is it is funny that this is happening. Anyways, let me know what you feel about this. I'll see you in another video. Happy prompting.